want to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. Happy Father's Day to you all. Now, women, you should be clapping, especially if you have. Want to thank those who got service started with an accessory prayer. An accessory prayer is important. The level, the level that our church is going to, um, we got to be on point when it comes to intercessory prayer and prayer and fasting. Amen. If we want to see a move of God, we're going to have to give up some stuff in our prayer time. Amen. God is awesome. I know you weren't going to say amen to that, but it's, but that's just the truth. Look at somebody and say, it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. A lot of us have been praying for stuff, but it ain't been happening. But I believe that in these next several months, God is going to reveal himself in this place, which he's already doing, and I'm so happy about it. God is awesome. And then we want to thank um, this praise and worship team on this morning. Amen. And then our music department, Prophet Steph and Elder Darius and Minister Tyler, amen. Our greeters, thank our greeters, amen. I, I do this every Sunday, so if you're visiting with us, the Bible says give honor where honor is due, amen. And we should esteem others better than ourselves. It can't always be about you. Amen. Then we thank we thank God for the, our media team and our sound team this morning. Thank God for all of you in their respective places. And then those ones that's that's teaching uh, today over there. Amen. Our executive pastor is here, Pastor Cedar. We love you. We thank you. Now, we can't give honor to all those people and not give honor to our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I come this morning to say something to the fathers on this morning very briefly. Really, we've already had church. Amen. Thank you, brother, for, thank you. Thank you. Brother over there to my left, I mean to my right, to your left, he said, yes, we have, we have. But it's in present, the presence of God in situations like this that miracles happen. And we want to make, we want to make this room conducive for miracles. And I don't know if you feel it or not, but his presence is in this room. You, you can, we sometimes we sit like ain't nothing happening, but his presence is in here. And I believe someone is get, has already gotten healed, delivered, and set free. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Somebody say, I received that. I received that. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. And so, God, we thank you. Keep playing. We honor you and we give you thanks for your word. We know that it's already blessed. But we pray that the people of God receive your word. And as they're receiving the word, as I'm speaking the word, I pray that they see you and they hear you through your vessel. We love you and we thank you. 
for what our eyes have seen already and what our ears have heard. Lord, we pray that you be glorified, magnified, and the devil be simply horrified. Lord, we thank you for every father. Lord, we pray that you give them strength. We pray that you give them peace. In this day, we love you and we honor you in Jesus' name. And all the people shout amen. 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 I want to... I want to, if your father has gone on to be with God, I want to, I want to just take a, a moment just to give you words of comfort that, that the Holy Spirit is a comforter. And even though some, some people's fathers may not be with them, they've gone to be with God. But I want to encourage you today that let the Holy Spirit minister to you in times like this, in days like this. And we pray that God will give you a peace that will pass all understanding that will guard your heart, your mind, and your spirit in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Amen. God is good. How many of you are ready for the word? Amen. Good to see all of you. Good to see all of you. I'm I'm not going to be traditional in, in my approach on this morning, but I am going to speak the word. But I just want to, I want to speak about the fathers. I want to talk about a real father, a real, a real man. Somebody say a real man. Amen. Y'all don't have to say it so softly. Somebody say a real man. Amen. I don't know if you know this or not, but Father's Day originated in the United States after a daughter of a Civil War veteran, Sonora Smart, died, wanted to pay an ode to all fathers across the globe. William Jackson Smart was a single father to six children. And his daughter decided to honor him by choosing his birth anniversary, June 5th, to celebrate Father's, Father's Day. And as we celebrate Father's Day on this day, we have to keep in mind that God had everything to do with man being created. Did, did y'all hear what I said? God had everything to do with man being created. Did you know, did you know that there are 1.5 billion fathers in this world? And I would like to say every one of them need are needed by someone else. Definition number one, a father is a man who has children. Definition number two, a father has the title of a priest. Definition number three. A father is a man that has sperm that can produce a baby. So the Bible says in Genesis 1 and 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the, all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. What was he saying? He said, we were created to reflect his majestic uh, on earth. We are to rule as God would rule. And let me explain this. Unfortunately, there are some men that don't look like the image that God created them in. Amen. That there are some churches that, that people walk by because they don't resemble what the word of God says a church is supposed to be. And so the portrait of who you supposed to be was documented by the person who created you to be. And any version of you that does not match who the creator made you to be will allow you to get uh, passed by. Amen. 
And so you never want to be in a place where you struggle with identity crisis. You never want to be in a place where you don't fit the portrait of who God made you to be. And when God said, let us make man, God is considering mankind, the full scope of humanity. And when the Bible says, and God said, that is declaration. So he was declaring something. And when he says, let us make man, that was a decision. And he says, in our image after the likeness, that is design. And when he says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the earth, that is destiny. So whenever God is declaring a thing, whenever God is making a decision, whenever God is designing something, whenever God destines something, he has purpose for it. Look at somebody and say, men have purpose. Come on, say it again. Men have purpose. Amen. Women, you should be clapping about that, that a man has purpose. Amen. Y'all, y'all a little light on y'all claps on Mother's Day. Y'all was clapping loud. This is not a social context. This scripture is not a social context because when God began to speak, it was no society. In Genesis 1. This is a spiritual context. Why? Because he, he did this in six days, not because he needed all six, but he wanted to make it relevant. Because whatever God does, he can do it in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. It, it, don't take, it didn't take God six days to create anything. He could have spoke one word and it all happened at once. Look at somebody and say, but it was for us. God created creation out of his own divine delight. It gave God pleasure to create creation because it gave him pleasure to do so. And it qualifies in the category of grace. Somebody shout grace. Grace is not just unmerited favor. Like we always say, it is that, but grace is God's mean of self-expression. Since God is omniscient, he knew what he was going to create was going to mess up, but he created it anyway. Lord, have mercy. Take, just take a minute to think about that. No, don't take a minute. Take a second to think about that. Think, think about, think about, think about in God's uh, created creation, he still created us knowing that we were going to mess up. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. And therefore, creation is an act of grace. Philippians 2 and 13 says, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure means energizing or provides enablement. God makes his own both willing and desirous to do his work. That has to do with confidence in God's work in God's church. So if we submit to God's will, he'll work in his own in time way. Lord, have mercy. He, he wants to work in us. That's why he created us, even though he knew we was going to disobey. Even though he knew we wasn't going to act right, he's still God. And he still give us space because of his grace. Amen. I like that. Look at somebody and say, I got space because of his grace. It gives him pleasure when what he created functions in its authority. A man was created to be a man. Amen. And we know in verse... Yeah, you can clap about that. A man was created to be a man, not a boy. He was supposed to start as a boy, as an infant boy, but, but he was supposed to be a man, man. Hey, hey man, y'all don't like that. To have, to have bass in his voice. 
to be a provider, to love his wife as Christ loved the church, to cultivate and have dominion, especially every father that is a man of God should operate in the authority in which God has placed in his life. Amen. The man, the man is supposed to be the head. Oh, I, I know y'all, women, y'all ain't liking that today. The, the, the man is supposed to be the head and not the tail. He's supposed to be above and not beneath. We are supposed to be the lender and not the borrower. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. I, I know y'all thought I was going to behave myself, but I just, I just had to come out of it. We got to understand that the government shouldn't be deciding what a man is. Oh, y'all. Lord, have mercy. I, Lord, have mercy. We got some government people in here. I, I, we we, we got to understand when God created man, he knew what he was doing. Amen. A man can't get up the next day and say, I'm a cat. A, a man can't get up in the morning and say, I'm a rabbit. A man cannot get up in the morning and say, I'm transgender. Oh, I know y'all don't want to hear this, but we got to talk about it because they putting it into the school system now, and we need real men to stand up and say, you're not teaching my kids that foolishness. Oh, y'all y'all ain't ready for me today. A -a Amen. After you finish praying and you get off your knees and wipe the snot out of your nose and that water out of your eyes, we got to get up. The Bible says we got to watch as well as pray. So once you spend all your time being spiritual, put some feet to your prayers. Oh, y'all ain't clapping good enough for that. A woman shouldn't be telling a man what to do. No, because a real woman want a man to take charge. Oh, y'all ain't clapping. What about these women over here? They not clapping. Some women over there not clapping. You got to understand when, when God said the man is the head, that's what he meant. That, that's what he meant. And you can always tell a man that's being controlled by his one man. He mad because she mad. She ain't, she ain't speaking. He ain't speaking. And it's totally out of his character. Because he always speak. But see, a real man don't let his wife know everything he's feeling about other people. Oh, y'all. Because the man is supposed to be a protector. It's some things you don't want your wife to know. Come on, look at somebody and say, I'm a protector. I'm a protector. Come on, me and say, I'm a protector. I'm a protector. Yeah, you're a protector. Say, yeah. Yeah. You look at some men, you don't know if they're a man or a woman. I've been in the mall walking and somebody say, that's a... That's a, I say, that's a man. No, that's a woman. We having a conversation about whether it's a man or a woman. God was not indecisive. He was not indecisive when he created man. He, he wasn't, when he created man, he wasn't void of anything. Lord, have mercy. When he created man, he created man in his image. He created him in his image. He wasn't creating him because he was void of something. He was everything. God don't need nothing. And so now we have men that's trying to rewrite the script. Trying to get pregnant. 
Yeah, I seen that the other day. I said, look at, look at this mess. Everything that God created was good. But when it got into man hand, it became defiled. Y'all ain't, yeah. Somebody say a real man. A real man bring his money home. I know y'all ain't going to clap to that because some of y'all still got separate bank accounts. You ain't bold enough. You ain't got enough to make a sign of uh, prenuptial. <laughs> and we, we got to get, the church has to get back to the basics. We, we got to get back to the basic where we bringing our kids to church. You make sure they go to school, but they te- look what they teaching in the school. They having parades, pride parades in the hallway. But we tell our kids, you going if you sick. Yeah, we do. Oh, I, I know. I already know. I'm right about it. I work. I worked in the school district for 25 years. They send their kids to school sick. Let the nurse call me. Kids come into the school smelling just like weed. I had to have conversation with parents. I say, man, why can't you smoke after you drop them off? You smoking wide, you bringing them, and then it's like they've been smoking. Y'all know secondhand smoke is worse. Oh, y'all ain't. Boy, y'all something else. And so we come, we come to, we come to this place in, in Jeremiah 5 and 1, where it says, run ye to and fro. Through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man. And because in verse 27 of Genesis, he was talking about male and female, he made he them. In the message Bible, it says one man and one woman. He said, if I can find one man and one woman, if there be any that execute judgment and seeketh the truth, I will pardon Jerusalem. Lord, have mercy. So here is the creator who created creation. Now what he created, he's looking for to spare a city. Lord have mercy. You know the story. He couldn't find one person. Lord have mercy. And and in this text, the Lord tells not only the prophets, but he tells others to run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem to find one righteous that he could use to pardon Judah. Uh, The Lord tells them uh, to look in the broad places, commonly where there would be good people. So I'm pretty sure they were looking in the church. Lord, have mercy. say, right here in the church. This is where good people come. No, this is where sick people come. The hospital, the hospital, the church is known as a hospital where people come to get right. Amen. Have you ever been in that situation before where you was all messed up? You was messed up from the flow up, and, and, and you came to church, and you act like what wasn't nothing going on. And then one Sunday, God, the Spirit of God, hit you. And when it hit you, you start talking right. You start, you start acting right. Everything about you did a 360. And so he's telling them, God, God, he's saying, go in the streets, go in the common places uh, where good people are. The city of Jerusalem was not desolate, so there should have been at least one righteous man there. The Lord was seeking out a man that was of virtue, honor, and honesty. 
Real men operate in honesty. I, I know you. Yeah, because a lot of men lie. And a lot of women do too. The Lord was seeking the truth of his doctrine and worship, which seeks to speak it and maintain it. The people in the city refused to repent. The leaders refused to repent because it was not the norm. Isn't that something that in our day is not the norm to come clean? It's not the norm for people to, to, to come clean about what they did or what they do. It's the norm that people that's trying to hide what they're doing, they talk, about, talk to everybody else about other people and try to make them look bad. Oh, y'all, 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 are y'all here? Are y'all here in this house? He said, I was looking for one righteous. Somebody who would stand for the truth. Somebody would worship me. Somebody that would be honest. And he said, I came to the church first and couldn't find one. Couldn't find one. Couldn't find one. I was looking under seats. I even looked in the baptismal pool. I went on the roof. I went in the office space. I went in the unfinished area. I went in the bathroom. I couldn't find one. I couldn't find one. Somebody say one. And I want to just give you two things. God in this scripture was looking for two things, a possible three. No, I, I talked about spades the other week, so we don't have to talk about that today. The first thing he was looking for in the real man or a great father was that he was just, just, somebody say just, just means he is guided by truth, amen, what woman don't want a man that deals in the truth, women y'all ain't clapping hard enough, we talking about a just man, to act justly is the act of according to the norms of behavior that God has established. See, when you just, you don't err from the word. You don't go away from the word. It's whatever the word say. I know only five people are gonna clap to Mika, but, but we gotta understand he's looking for somebody who's just. You ain't gonna find it in the government. You may not find it on your job. You, you got to understand, he says, I'm looking for somebody who is just. And Malachi 2 and 6 says, the law of truth was in his mouth and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and turned many away from iniquity. See, you, when somebody is just, they turn people from their evil way. They don't bring them in to what they feeling. Somebody say a just man. A just man. A just man. You're, not even gonna, you're not even gonna come before a just man talking crazy. Because that just man is gonna put you in your place. Oh Lord. A just man. Somebody say a just man. My daddy a just man. I remember we were in Seven International, and I said something. He had just joined the church. He had just joined the church, Pastor Cedar. And he said, at the church, he said, Pastor, he said, pa he called me Pastor. I got scared. He said, Pastor, can I, can, I, can I talk to you for a second? I said, yes. I said, yes. I said, come on in, Deacon Massenburg, and sit down. 
He said, I just, look, he said, look, Pastor, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to ask you something. He said, you said something in the pulpit today. And he said, I think you could have said it a different way. What he was saying was, I shouldn't have said it. But how he dressed it up. See, when people are just, they're not trying to kick you away. They trying to pull you in. Yeah. See what? And, and see, he was just. He didn't. He said. He said. I know if I heard what you said, and and I feel a certain type of way. What you think the other people? I said you right, Deacon Massenburg. I could have said it a different way. You you. We need people in our life that's going to correct us when we mess up. I know, I know. And it's nothing like when a man corrects you. When a woman corrects you, we like, dang, man. Why she? That, that, that simply means that we haven't, we haven't, we haven't desired in ourselves to be right yet. Because if a woman has to correct you, you already know you wrong. Lord. My Lord. Mm. Listen to what it says. It's talking about live and what you teach. I always tell people in leadership, I tell them in leadership, if I mess up, I got to come before the church to get it right. Because I can't preach the word to you and admonish you to do certain things. And then when I mess up, I can't come before you and say I was wrong. Because you're not weak when you come before people and say you're wrong. It's really a sign that you're strong. When I'm weak, God is strong in me. Somebody say, you got to be just. And that's what we need in this world. We need just men. We need just men. Number two, I know y'all like, yeah, I'm almost done. Yeah, I'm almost done. Habakkuk says this in Habakkuk 2 and 4. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith even when it don't seem like it's right know that your faith is working to righteousness did you hear that even when it don't look like it's right you got to trust the God in you Lord have mercy that that when you try when you start trusting the God in you you'll start to understand it ain't gonna always look right to our eyes Because faith is not about always what you can see. It says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what? Things not seen. You ain't going to see everything. You ain't going to feel everything. Sometimes you ain't going to feel it, but you got to believe it. Oh, Lord, y'all. You may not feel like your body being healed, but I bet you God is working on the inside. Oh, my God. Is there a bomb in Gilead? Somebody say, yes, Lord, it is. You don't feel something happen. You just, when you go back to the doctor, they say, we don't see it no more. Somebody shout, faith. Just. Just. A just man is going to get you to walk in faith. A good man's steps are ordered by the Lord, they ordered by the Lord. It may not feel right in my flesh, but it's ordered by the Lord. I may not like what he's telling me to do, but it's ordered by the Lord. Why? Because a just man steps are ordered by the Lord. Let a man start praying at 2 o'clock in the morning and see what the house do. That, that's, my, that's my second point, Jackie. My second point is this. God wants a man that prays. He didn't even find one praying, acting like they were praying. But it says, it says he wants a man that prays to offer devout petitions. And not, o- not only offer devout petitions, but praise 
and thank him. See, prayer needs assistance from praise sometimes. The Bible says when they were locked up in jail, <laughs> Lord have mercy, they, they had a prayer service at 12 midnight. Amen. And it wasn't in the church, it was in the jail cell. They made, they made where they were in bondage at their sanctuary. Lord have mercy. And you got to understand that you got to make the place of your bondage a place of your refuge. Lord have mercy. The Bible says that they begin to, they begin to sing and pray and then an earthquake happened. Woo, my God. Look, look, look at somebody and say in the next seven days, something is going to happen. Come on, that was the wrong neighbor. Tell them in the next seven days, something is going to happen. Tell them it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. See, you got to start speaking those things as not as though they were. Look at somebody else and say, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. He, he need a man. He need a man that's going to pray. And every woman that's not married yet, you should want a man that's going to pray. Stop looking for these jokers that don't do nothing. They don't even go to church. Don't want to go to church. Ain't thinking about going to church, and I just heard somebody that's helping me preach say, and they don't want you to go to church. Uh, high five somebody and say, but as for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord. Yeah, we gonna serve him. We gonna serve him. And, and you got to have, you got to have standards when you are a female. Yeah. They got you gotta have standards. If you don't go to church, you don't need me. You can't have me if you don't go to church. Well, I don't like church if you ain't gonna like me either. I, I got I, I got, I got, I got, my drawers got too big for my britches. Did I say that right? How you say it? What? I got too big for my britches. Uh -huh. Somebody say, let them slide, it's Father's Day. Thank you, Perry. I got the church and, I was going to say, I got the church and, we was in my grandfather's old, old building. And the Sunbeams Choir was singing that Sunday. And I was just, I don't know, I was about nine years old, and I told my mama, I said, I ain't singing this Sunday. She said, you ain't what? <laughs> just like that. I was like, you ain't what? I said, I ain't singing this Sunday. She said, you going to get up there and sing. I said, I ain't going to open my mouth. She said, get up there and don't open your mouth and see what I'm going to do. So we got up there and we started singing, and I wasn't saying nothing. And I saw her start walking towards the choir stand. I started moving my mouth. <laughs> I wasn't singing though, I was just moving my, I was lip singing. And then she came in the choir stand, and I got loud. I know she's not a, a, a father, but, but she was acting as a, a father in that moment. And she was saying, you're going to get up there and you're going to sing. I don't care what you say. And you need people in your life that's going to make you do something. Oh, I, I know y'all don't want to hear that. Well, you can't make nobody do nothing. Yeah, but, 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 but a woman has the power when it comes to that man. I'm sleeping with you and I, don't, I ain't got no ring. 
I know three people was going to clap. That's all. How you want to be with me, I ain't got nothing to drive. I know men are like pastor, it's Father's Day. No, we, I, so, so since men are not going to step up and be right, we need the women to step up and be right. Lord, have mercy. Y'all, y'all don't like me right through here. But, but I, tell, I tell women all the time, if he, don't, if he can't take care of you, he's not the one for you. <laughs> On everything I love, I don't care who you are. The Bible says that Sarah called Abraham Lord. And she wasn't calling him Lord because he was a lame. She was calling him Lord because he was doing something. Lord have mercy. Y'all ain't men ain't clapping. They got their arms folded on me. No, you don't need a man that's going to come to church and watch you praise. That's when the enemy come in. One is praising and one is spectating. And that's how he gets us. One is going to church and one is staying at home. That, that's, how, that's how the snake got Eve. Adam off worshiping on Father's Day and leave his wife at home. Or, look, now they're trying to preach the text. He wasn't in his right place. <laughs> or, the woman then left the man at home and she at church worshiping, and here come the snake. Y'all like that better? But either or, you got to get rid of the appetite. The Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. It's the Bible. It's the word. Bible. So that's simply saying that if you want to have sex, get married. Yeah. But the church, we got it mixed up. No, I'm single. I can do what you want to do. No, when you're single, you got more time to spend with God. Right. Three member church right there. One, two, three. So he says, not only do we need a just man, he said, we need, we need men that pray. He said, then Luke 18 and 1, then he spoke a parable to them that men ought to pray and not lose heart. You should always, a, a man that's a believer in Jesus Christ should be, should be at the church every time we say prayer. It don't matter if the women don't show up, the men should show up. And pray and not sleep. No, we walk around the sanctuary. We praying. We seeking God. We speaking in tongues. We calling things that's not as though they were. You, you got you to gotta start speaking some stuff in prayer. Got to start calling out. And I used to be one of them ones that didn't like to pray. Because I thought I had a gift, and I thought the gift was going to get me over. But I found out that the gift is not going to get you over. It's going to take you under. You got to pray. Look at somebody and say, we need a man that prays. Father, I stretch my hand. We need, we need prayer like that. Wake up the whole house. Mama, what daddy doing? You know what he doing. And the whole house get up and watch you pray. Men that pray changes atmospheres. A man that prays changes seasons. It can be winter in your life, but it can be summer in your spiritual life. Somebody say, we need a man that can pray. We need a man that can pray to pull you out of some stuff. Because just because you got money don't mean it can pull you out of something. You need the prayers of the righteous. 
The Bible say the prayer of the righteous man avails much. You, you, got to, you got to pray some stuff down. You sick, he get under the bed and start praying Jesus. And before you know it, you sweating and what you was feeling, you ain't feeling no more. Somebody say prayer. We need men that pray. That lift up and hold up the blood-stained banner. Pray. And he says, not only pray, but when you start, when you have a prayer life, it's, it's, it's hard not to have a praise life. Lord, have mercy. I, I, I know y'all, I ain't got to praise God. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Praise that is not heard ain't praise. If you can't hear it, it ain't praise. The Bible said Jehoshaphat and them got ready to go to battle, and they said, put the choir members in front. I'm, I'm just showing you they fasted. They fasted before they started singing. The Bible says they started singing, and the army was in the back. And they say when they started singing the songs of God, an uh, ambush came. Lord, have mercy. And we got people in the church say it's too much singing in the church. It ain't never too much singing. Do y'all know that when we sing, it, it, it creates an environment where the enemy get mad? He get confused, and his enemy, the people that came to destroy, they start fighting each other. Well, that's what the Bible says happened when they began to sing. When they began to sing, the enemy said ambush because Jehoshaphat, they was on top, and the army was in the bottom of the valley. And they heard noise when they began to sing, and they looked over, and they saw they was killing one another. How many of you know that the battle is not yours? The battle belongs to God. But it started with prayer. It started with prayer. And so you got to pray. Men that, men that pray together, they stay together. Men that pray, their family stay together. Men that pray, that, listen, God will work miracles in your life. Prayer needs assistance from praise. And I know we didn't put praise in our feet. But praise always been in the mouth. I will bless the Lord at all time and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. That means you got to say something. You got to tell God how bad he is. He's a bad man. No, I said the God that I serve, he's a bad man. And I'm not demeaning him, but he is a bad man. Not only does prayer need assistance from praise, but he needs assistance from thanks. And you ain't got to say it loud. You can just be in the store. Lord, I thank you. You putting that high food into your, 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 your cart, your grocery basket. Thank you, Lord. You hoping you got enough money by the time you get to the register, but somebody in the aisle heard you say thank you. And they just following you to the cash register. You don't know it yet, but when you get there and you turn around, they're going to say, I got you. That's how God do when you put prayer, praise, and thanks together. Somebody shout hallelujah. Real men are just. Real men pray and praise and thank God. It's, not, it's nothing like when a man say, thank you, God. And we ain't got to be like the women do. We can just say, just see or hearing men say, thank you, Lord. It changes a room. I, I know men, men like, Pastor, don't make us do it today. But it's something about when a man prays, it's something about when a man uh, praises. It's something about when he just say thank you. Real men. Real men. And it's what our society is lacking. Oh, Lord. 
is what our society is lacking. And, and listen, I don't want to demean men. Men have value. That's why the government is trying to do what it is doing. The man was here to, 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 to put in, to, to cultivate, to replenish. The woman was here to carry the seed. The man was here to plant the seed. The woman was to carry the seed and give birth to the seed. And the man was to cultivate. And we need more men that's going to cultivate and not implode. Lord, hammer. let me stop. Let me stop. The third one is this, and it's for free. Not only do we need a just man, we need a man that pray, praise, and thank God, but we need a man that put up. Let me hear the man say, yeah. 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 That, see, that changed the room right there. You hear that bass? It startled me. I'm reminded of David. David was tending to the sheep. And the Bible says that his father told him to take his brother some lunch because they was getting ready to fight the Philistine army. Y'all know the story? Say yes if you do. Yes. So y'all know the story so I can cut through the chase. The Bible says that David took his brothers to lunch. And when he got to the, when he got to the fighting ground, he noticed that it was a giant, the Philistine giant. And Saul said, listen, you can't. You can't fight him. You too, you just a youth. But how many of you know that God can use a man? He can, he can use a man. And, and the Bible says that David started, started talking to Goliath, saying, you the one that defiled the armies of the Lord. And David told him, he said, but you're going to be defeated today. David didn't have a sword. He didn't have a knife. He didn't, have, he didn't have an armor. Matter of fact, uh, the Bible says that Saul gave him his stuff, but it didn't fit right. And don't you know when stuff don't fit right, it means it don't belong to you. Oh, Lord have mercy. That, that's just something you can get on your way home. When it don't fit right, it means it's not for you. What other people think you need, you may not need it because God has given you everything that you need that pertains to life and death. Look at somebody and say, he gave me them smooth stones. I got them smooth stones. Five of them. Somebody say five. Just because you got five don't mean you're going to have to use all of them. Lord, have mercy. When God is in the fight, it's only going to take one stone. Lord, have mercy. The Bible says that, that, that David took that slingshot and put the rock in the slingshot and shot it and hit him in the forehead. Killed him. Didn't even have to fight him. So when men pray, when men are just, when men pray and when they thank God, the fight ain't going to be a long fight. Lord, have mercy. High five two people and say it ain't going to be long now. Come on, say it's not going to be long now. You're about to win the fight. You're about to win the battle. Because the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Somebody say, yes, it is. David got beside himself. David got beside himself and cut the head off. <laughs> I love it. I love this because it, it signifies that you're about to be the head. Y'all missed it. When he cut the head off, it signified that he's about to be the head.
He put the head on the platter and told you, now you're the head. So whatever you defeat, it means you are overcomer of what you defeat. That's why I can say you're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. Men, you need it. You need it in the home. You need it in the church. You need it in the school. You need it. You need it. You need it. Your children need you. Your family needs you. You need it. And you got to know you need it. Sometimes you got to put the earmuffs on. Stop listening to all that stuff that don't matter. Some stuff don't matter. Some stuff is just a distraction. It's a distraction. It's a distraction. Stop listening. Start listening to God. He going to put you on the straight and narrow. Now, if you, if you go against God, then you, it's something wrong with you. But the real man, the good man, the good father, the good father, he does what his spiritual father wants him to do. Jesus said, me and my father are one. He said, when you see the father, you see me. When you see the father, you see me. What he was saying is you don't need to see him because you already seen him. You looking at him. We won. Repeat after me. I am the image of God. You are the image. You were created in his image. Look like the portrait he snapped of you when he breathed life into your body. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up. You get all the glory. You get all the honor. You get all the praise. We thank you for the fathers today. But we thank you also for the mothers that carried the fathers in their womb. We love you. We honor you. We pray peace on every man that's a father. Lord, we love you and we honor you. Lord, we pray not only peace, but we pray God's speed in health and finances. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you'll be glorified and magnified and the devil will be simply horrified because the fathers have taken their rightful place. We honor you, we thank you, we love you. In Jesus' name. And all the people shout amen. Amen. And amen. Come on and clap those hands. Come on. Thank you, Zena, for standing. Come on. If that word bless your heart. Bless your life. The doors of the church are open. It's an opportunity where you can come and give your life to Christ, number one.